And this product of inertia is going to be zero as long as this y and z axis that we choose for this cross section is along the principal axes of inertia, meaning that there is this, you know, there's this major and minor principal axes, just like there is for like major and minor principal stresses, there is a maximum and minimum moment of inertia for a given cross section. Now this, if you don't, if you have this asymmetrical random looking cross section, shoot, you got to use some advanced techniques to try to figure out what these major and minor principal axes are. And they're going to involve things that look like transformation equations with sines and cosines. Or in fact, you can go back to Otto Moore and use some sort of Moore circle process to actually find these major and minor principal axes of inertia. But for us and in, as engineers, most cross sections will have an axis of symmetry. And one thing that you can sure, be sure of is that the principal axes are usually along or parallel and perpendicular to, the, to an axis of symmetry. So for instance, let's say like an I-shaped section. So for an I-shaped cross section, I have two lines of symmetry. And so my major and minor principal axes would be along these lines of symmetry. And so here, if this is my Z and this is my Y coordinate or my Y axis, then IZ represents my major moment of inertia and IY, my least moment of inertia or my minor. And let's say for a shape like an angle shape, let's say I have an equal legged angle shape right here, an L shape. And so this has a line of symmetry right here. And this, this would be one of my principal axes and perpendicular to it, where the centroid of this cross section is somewhere, let's say around here, this would represent my other principal axes. And in fact, my major moment of inertia would be about this Z and my minor would be about this y. All right, so hopefully those are some examples of identifying the principal axes. But the big point here is that as long as my product of inertia is zero, I satisfy the equilibrium equations for an arbitrary shape. And if my moment is applied along the z, which represents a principal axis, then yes, I can still use this linear stress variation from the neutral axis. So now that we've dealt with an arbitrary cross section, let's take the case where we have a moment that is not applied about an axis of symmetry. And now we have what would be considered biaxial bending. And biaxial bending happens more often than you think. Some examples of biaxial bending include things like columns of tables, and you can just think of anything like columns of buildings and tables that will experience biaxial bending. Just, you know, if you consider a table with four legs, and if you just put something on the table, you know, you put a plate of food on that table right here, put a big ass watermelon. You know, this thing is gonna wanna bend. When you look in one direction, it's gonna wanna bend this way. The table will bend this way. And then here in this direction, the table will bend this way. It's gonna wanna bend this way. It's gonna do like this plate deformation. And what that does to these columns is that it makes this column wanna bow out, if you will, one way this way if you just look at it in 2d and basically this combination of bending in both directions it's going to bow out of the screen if you will and then par in, in the plane of the screen so that is an example of biaxial bending it's just like taking a cantilever and trying to bend it diagonally another example would be something like a, a street sign on a windy day you and what you have on a windy day you'll have this the self-weight and the signs and the traffic light the sign is holding and you'll have the load going this way causing bending in plane and then if I, it's windy then i have load being applied into the board on this beam here causing again biaxial bending and you'd have probably this beam bending in some sort of diagonal right these are examples and you could probably come up with a bunch but what it, what it comes down to is that you end up with this if i take a rectangular cross section and I have a coordinate system for these axes. So I have Y going upwards from the centroid, Z going horizontal right here, lined up with its principal axes, boom, right here. This moment is no longer just applied about the Z axis. It's something that's arbitrary applied at some angle. This M right here is causing bending about the Z and the Y axis. 
And by superposition, I can take this and I can break up this moment into its Z and Y components. And this moment, this would be the Z component, MZ, and this would be the MY component, MY. Like the sum of these two would be the entire cross section. Here, this, if this is some angle, which we define from going from Z to Y as some angle theta, this MZ would just be M cos theta, and MY, the magnitude of the Y component, would be M sine theta. We know that bending moments cause normal stress. This normal stress, the total normal stress on this cross section, this sigma, is equal to negative MZY over IZ. Here on the right, this is bending moments about the Y axis. So here, when we did MZ, this is how we came up with our flexure formula, and we had compression at the top, and the way that our coordinates system was set up was that Y was positive going upwards, so that if I had a positive internal moment or this positive MZ, I had compression at the top. And that's why we had that negative sign. For here, I have a positive Y moment, and I want the equation to reflect that when I look at the right of this drawing, that I should have compression on the right side. So here, this equation is going to have the same form. This is going to have this M y, moments about the y, the distance that we multiply by is going to be some distance z, and over here we're going to take moments of inertia for this one about bending, about the y axis. And what I want is that when I have a positive internal moment or a moment component in the y direction, I want compression on the right. And that would be a negative z value, let's say, right here. And so I'm going to, just by that z, the sign of the position for z, I'm going to have compression. So I can just make this a positive sign here. And this is my formula for normal stress for biaxial bending. Now another important point is the orientation of the neutral axis. The neutral axis still passes through the geometric centroid of the cross section, but we no longer know the orientation of it. And But what we do know is that the neutral axis should be the location where the normal stress is zero. I can take this relationship, set it equal to zero, and I can substitute for these. So if I, if I bring this to the left side, and I substitute mz for m cos theta, and this would be equal to m sine theta. And right here, I know that the moments cancel out. I bring the cosine over here, I bring the z over here, and I would get y over z is equal to the relationship or the ratio y over z is equal to sine over cosine sine theta over cosine theta which is just tangent theta times i z over i y and this y over z would be the orientation of my neutral axis y over z the ratio y over z is also i can define it as some angle tangent alpha and this alpha would be the orientation of the neutral axis. And this alpha, the way that we have it defined. So let's say it's somewhere over here, some arbitrary location. I'll just boom, right here. Let's say this is that neutral axis and the angle from Z towards Y right here. This would be that angle alpha. And this would be my neutral axis orientation. And if you notice right here, if IY, if our cross section is purely symmetrical, IZ equals IY, and then alpha is equal to theta, and that would be my orientation of the neutral axis. And this having this orientation of the neutral axis gives us a sense of where our maximum normal stress would occur. And those maximum normal stresses are going to be the furthest distance from the neutral axis. Those are the points that you are going to want to look at especially when you have biaxial bending, to see where our maximum normal stresses are. All right, hopefully this was a good review for unsymmetric bending or bending about an asymmetrical section and biaxial bending. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Structure free.